this is the next slide which shows the power versus wind speed relationship. So suppose this is your wind turbine. So you have three blades which is rotating in a circle with a certain velocity. Just like a fan, in a fan you are using a motor to drive the wind. Turbine is a reverse of your fan where the wind is driving the uh, blades of your turbine. Okay. So wind is flowing into your wind turbine and this wind turbine blades are rotating in a circular arc. So the total area that is uh, covered by this rotating wind turbines is the radius of the, ra the, the radial distance from the center of the wind turbine axis to the edge of the plate multiplied by uh, square of that into pi, this circular area which is pi by 4 d square where d is the turbine blade diameter. You can also say pi by pi r square where r is the turbine radius. Okay. If this is the total diameter, this is the diameter, sorry this one then pi by 4 d square. Okay. Now suppose we observe wind flowing into the turbine over a time interval delta t okay. and the wind velocity the mean wind velocity at the turbine height is say v this v here. Okay. Then over a time interval delta t the wind covers a distance of delta x equals to v into delta t. So, over a time interval of delta t, the wind is covering a total distance of v into delta t, where v is the velocity of the wind. So, if the wind speed is 6 meters per second and you are uh, looking at it for 1 minute, then the wind is covering 6 into 60 meters in 1, one minute. If rho is the density of air, then the total mass of air flowing through the swept blade area, this is called the swept blade area, in this time interval delta t is m air, total mass of air flowing through this swept blade area equals to density of air into the swept blade area A, which is this pi by 4 d square, into this total distance covered by wind over this period of time. So, this is delta x. So, over a period of time delta t, this wind moves here. So, this a, the total mass of wind that is constrained in this cylindrical region of uh, length delta x and diameter d is the total mass of wind that is flowing through your wind turbine blades over this time period delta t. Okay. So, this mass of air is rho, the density, cross sectional area into v delta t which is your delta x. So, this is mass. So the energy is half m v square kinetic energy of wind. So, m is this mass of air and v square is the velocity of wind and this is half m v square. So, the total mechanical energy of wind that is available over this time delta t is half m air v square that is half rho a delta t v q. 1 v is here and v square is here. So, the available wind power is this total energy by the total time of observation. So, delta e wind by delta t which is equals to half rho a v q. Okay. So, the make kinetic energy, the rate of kinetic energy available for a wind turbine of diameter d is half rho a v q where a is pi by 4 d square and v is the velocity of wind. This is the available wind power, kinetic wind power that is available to your turbine for exploitation. So, what this means is the wind power is proportional to the cube of its velocity and this is very important. Okay. Uh, we will see why this is but one thing that is clear is that this is the total wind energy that is available. Okay. Now, you cannot fully convert this total wind, e wind energy. There are frictional losses and other losses that you have taken into account just like in a turbine case. So, there will be a efficiency kind of a coefficient. The total electricity generated, that is the total energy that can be extracted from wind power by this turbine is half of this efficiency factor into rho a v q. And for wind turbine literature, this efficiency factor is called Cp, the power coefficient. Okay. It is just like the eta m of your uh, hyd hydropower plant, but here we are using the variable Cp, the power coefficient 
because that is the standard uh, variable that is used in uh, wind turbine literature. So, the total energy that is extracted by this turbine is half Cp rho A V cube, where Cp is the power coefficient or the efficiency of this wind turbine. Okay. Now, this cubic dependence is very important because this means that a small change in wind velocity results in a very large change in the total available power. Let us see why this is. Suppose you have two locations. In one location, the wind speed is say 10 meters per second. In another location, the wind speed is 8 meters per second. So, location 2 has 80 percent, location 2's wind velocity is 80 percent of that of the first location, location 1. Correct. So, the ratio of the velocities V2 by V1 is 8 by 10 which is 0 0.8. Okay. Then what is the ratio of the of the relative available wind power in these two locations? W dot 2 by W dot 1 assuming that the efficiency is the same, the turbine blade area is the same, everything else is the same, just the wind velocity has decreased to 80 percent. So, W dot 2 by W dot 1 will be equal to v2 cube by v1 cube because the proportionality is v cube. We are assuming a is being held constant. So, this is 0 0.8 whole cube which is 0 0.512. So, a location with 80 percent the wind velocity of another location only has 51 percent of the available wind power of location 1. So, you see how rapidly the wind power is declining even with a small change in the average wind velocity available. Similarly, a location with 50 percent of the wind speed as the as uh, location 1 will only have 12 percent of the available wind power. Okay. So, suppose one uh, location has 10 meter per second wind average wind velocity, another location is 5 meter per second average velocity. Then the ratio of the velocities is 5 by 10 that is half. Now, half cube is 1 by 8. So, 1 by 8 is 0 0.121. So, location 2 just has 12.5 percent of the total wind energy that is available in location 1. So, if location 1 could generate say 100 kilowatts, location 2 will just generate 12.5 kilowatts. So, which means that this decline in wind velocity creates a very rapid decline in available wind power. So, you have to be very, very careful of what is your wind velocity that is actually available in a location. Otherwise, your wind turbines will be economically unfeasible. Another area is this area A, swept area of your wind turbine. If your swept area increases, then for a given turbine at least, the net power available is increasing. And this has been a general trend over the last 20-30 years. Okay. That overall wind turbines have grown bigger and they have grown higher as well. Okay. Because usually wind speeds increase with altitude. So, you would want to move up as much as possible and the available wind power increases with the swept blade area. So, you need to make the blade areas bigger as big as possible to extract the maximum power from a given turbine. So, in 1980s and 1990s, the average diameter of wind turbines was 17 meters and the average power output was 75 kilowatt per turbine. So, now if you go to say 1995 to 2000, it went the average diameter went from 17 meters to 50 meters and the average power output became 750 kilowatts. So, a 10 times increase in the average power output. Okay. Then you go another 10 years 2005 to 2010. Now, it has gone up to 80 meters the average diameter and the power output rated power 1800 kilowatts. Then you go to 2015 to 2020. The average diameter has gone to 125 meters and the average rated power to 5000 kilowatts, so 5 megawatts. Okay. And this is trend is expected to continue 
to 150 meters, 250 meters, to up to 20 to 20,000 kilowatts. So this 20 megawatt turbines. So this has happened because of a rapid improvement in material technologies. So turbine blades are no longer made of metals, but carbon fibers, light, high tensile materials, which can be made very long, but still very strong, so that there is no mechanical, the, the mechanical stresses and strains does not cause mechanical failure of these long blades. So advancement in material technology has made it possible to for the wind turbines to grow so large and become these mega structures, which are basically at uh, whose hub height that is uh, hub height has grown to around 100 meters above the above above the ground level, and whose diameters have gone to 150 meters. And this can be seen here that wind turbines to reactive are competing with some of the tallest mega structures in the world. Okay. So, for example, the Statue of Liberty is 305 feet, whereas the average US onshore wind turbine height is 466 feet. Okay. With the tallest onshore wind turbine height is 574 feet. Okay. The Eiffel Tower height is 1063 feet. Offshore wind turbine, new offshore wind turbine GE Halide X, whose uh, basically figure this is, heat height is 853 feet. So these are some of the tallest mega structures on the world today, comparing with some of the most renowned buildings in the world. Okay. So today we will stop here. We discussed some of the ideas of wind turbines, how to evaluate the available wind power. In the next class, we will look at a little bit more detail of how to measure wind speed distributions because wind speed is variable. So we need to figure out how to uh, find average wind speeds, find the most probable wind speeds and based on that how to design the optimum wind turbine uh, rating. Okay. So we will discuss those things in the next class. Thank you for listening and hope you enjoyed the class. Uh, we will meet in the next class. Thanks.